If you have completed a radon test in your home and your radon levels are greater than 200 becquerels per meter cubed, you should reduce these levels to protect yourself and your family from this radioactive gas, which increases your risk of developing lung cancer. The most successful commonly used way of reducing radon in your home is to install a fan assisted sump. Improving ventilation will also help to reduce radon levels. A sump is a small cavity under the floor slab of the house, connected with a pipe to a sealed connection point in the footpath. This can be activated by removing the cap, adding a standard four inch pipe and a fan. This fan will draw the radon coming from the ground to the outside before it gets into your home. The fan has a high efficiency and low power consumption. Radon is then released in the outdoor air and diluted to very low levels. This fan assisted sump can reduce radon levels by up to 90%. A fan assisted sump is installed by either activating your standby sump or installing one from scratch. So since 1998, the building regulations require that all new homes in Ireland have a standby radon sump. So if your house was built since 1998, you should have one. So let's have a look at activating a standby radon sump. Before activating a standby sump, it is important to check that it has been installed correctly. If it's not installed correctly, water can collect in the bottom of the pipework and block the airflow. So to check the sump, we simply pour a bucket of water into it. And if the water drains away, the standby sump has been installed correctly and you can activate it. If the water doesn't drain away, then it should be possible to fix this by simply drilling a small drain hole in the bottom of the pipework. So these are the items in your radon fan installation kit. This is the pipe to go into the sump. This is the adapter to attach the fan to the pipe. And this is the fan which is pre-wired. And this is a grill to go on the exhaust of the fan. And this is a pipe to bring the cable through the wall. This is your electrical isolator. And this is your fan cover. And the kit also includes all the screws and fittings that you need to install these items. So a quick look at the tool kit. You'll need a cordless screwdriver cordless drill, a 6mm masonry drill bit, a 16mm masonry drill bit, a small flathead screwdriver, a small Phillips screwdriver, hammer and last but not least your safety goggles. The first step is to put the pipe into the sump. Then the adapter goes onto the pipe and the fan goes onto the adapter, making sure that the arrow is pointing upwards. Then the adapter is adjusted so that the fan sits tightly to the wall. To fix the fan to the wall, we have to first pop out the motor. So using a flathead screwdriver, we prise those clips open and the bottom one and the motor pops out. These are your two holes for your fixing screws. So just take a pencil and mark the location of the two holes. And using a six millimeter drill bit, drill the holes and you will need two rod plugs and two screws. And now that we have the fan housing secured to the wall, we can refit the fan. And just make sure again that the arrow is pointing upwards. Pop the fan in and close the two brackets, like so. So this is your fan grill, and it's very important to fit this. This keeps snails and vermin out of your fan. I'm now going to drill a hole through the wall to bring the power supply out of the fan and it's very important that this part is done by somebody who's competent to do electrical work. It's important to put the sleeve in to protect the cable in the cavity wall. So we now feed the cable through the sleeve to be wired to the isolator inside. The fan cable is now connected to this isolator, which in this case takes its power supply from this socket here. 
So now we have the fan running and we just need to check the airflow. And we've good airflow, so we put on the cover now. And the fan cover can be easily painted over to match the colour of the house. If your house doesn't have a standby sump, or if the standby sump is installed incorrectly, a new sump can be easily installed. And this is done from outside the house, so there's no need for any damage to internal floors or walls. There are several things to consider when choosing the best location for your sump. It's important to identify the entry points for the water mains, gas mains and ESB mains and stay away from these locations. Try to find a location at a back wall or a gable wall. It can be very unsightly to have a radon fan on the front of a house. Avoid bathrooms and utility rooms. There are too many pipes underground in these rooms. Stay at least 1.5 metres from window openings and doors. Take note of radiator locations and take care not to drill through radiator pipes. The sump should be located as close to a socket as possible to avoid unsightly cable runs. The best locations for radon sump are usually at a bedroom or living room. Besides your normal hand tools, the most important tool you need to put in a radon sump is a core drill with a 112 mm diameter drill bit. And this allows you to drill a very neat hole for a four inch pipe. To create a radon sump, you first drill a four inch hole through the external wall into the subfloor. Once the hole is drilled, you create a small void under the floor by extracting about a bucket full of stone. Now that the sump is ready, insert the pipework. And from here, the procedure for installing the fan is the exact same as the procedure for installing a fan on a standby sump. After your sump is activated, you should retest your home to ensure the radon has been reduced sufficiently. You can quickly check this with a digital monitor, but you should follow up with a three month test. The EPA will provide this for you free of charge. If your results are above 200 becquerels per meter cubed, then contact the EPA or your remediation contractor for more information.